One more day to celebrate the life and work of Jacob Parlis. I'm very glad to introduce the first speaker of today, Professor Maria José Pacifico, widely known as Zezé, which is a great researcher and a great person. Uh, by the way, <laughs> she was a PhD student of Wellington de Mello, which was one of the greatest uh, PhD students of Jacob Alice. And she's going to talk about up, down, and two-sided Lorentz-like attractors. Thanks. Thank you. Um, OK, and then first of all, thanks to Lorenz for the invitation. And uh, I'll talk about this subject. And I, as Lorenz always says, all my talks are the same. The same in the sense that you, we, I have always the same pictures. And it start with the Lorenz attractor. OK. And then let's recall uh, the, what is known by geometric Lorenz attractor. It's a model introduced in the 70s to modulate the, the Lorentz equations that was known for the ma mathematicians in the 60s. And the, the main uh, feature, feature of this model is that you have a singularity here, and then you have a cross-section. This singularity here is a hyperbolic singularity. And you have that the a cross-section here in the neighborhood of this singularity here, you have a linear vector field. And then you complete in this way project, uh, by an spatial rotation, and you f fit this triangles here that is the iterate of this part of the cross-section here. You have this effect, and then you turn back to the cross section here that we call sigma is the cross section, okay? And the main feature is that you can do this in such a way that there is a foliation which is preserved. What this means, you have that the, the linear uh, flow here you start here, and uh, this is preserved if the flow is linear in this neighborhood. And then you do this movement, preserving the foliation. This means that you have one foliation, one leaf here, then you look, the image is something here, and when you return to the cross-section, the image is contained in uh, another leaf, okay? It's contained in another leaf. This is the meaning here that you have def this foliation that is preserved. Once you have this, you can project. This represents the Poincaré map or the first return map to the cross-section. Here is the, the, the cross-section that I was talking about. And if you project, you have a one-dimensional map. And this one-dimensional map has very good properties in the sense that the derivative where it is has a discontinuity here. And the derivative here is infinity to the right and from the left. And uh, where it is defined, this is bigger. You can assume that it's bigger than um, square root of 2. OK? And then once you have this, you can just look at the properties 
of this one-dimensional map, this condition implies that this map here is eventually onto. This means that you have any interval here. You can iterate and you finally cover all the, the image. And uh, this implies that the, the maximal invariant set here is a transitive. Then the maximal invariant set here for the one-dimensional map is transitive. And from this, you go to the two-dimensional map and prove that the maximal invariant set here is transitive and it's an attractor also. And finally, from this, you return to the flow and you have that this, the maximal invariant flow um, set here, I'll call X the flow, that is this flow here I call X, and the maximal invariant set here is also is uh, transitive attract. Okay, and so this model realizes the conjecture of Lorentz in the 60s that coming from this equation you could have uh, an attractor with zero dimensional dimension and uh, it was not possible to prove at that time and this model proves the conjecture of Lorentz, okay? Well, the real conjecture of Lorentz was proved much later in, in the year 2000 by Tucker under the advisor of Leonard Carlson. Okay. This, uh, I would, you see that if you take a look on this picture here, you have that uh, this plan here. You know that everything is going on on the up part of this plan, okay? And so I, for convenience, I will call this an up Lorentz, okay? Then this, for me, is an up Lorentz. And what it should be a down Lorentz, you just reflect the, the picture, okay? And the main point is that, you see that the unstable separatories, this singularity here is hyperbolic and so it has the unstable manifold here has two branches and both branches of the singularities come to the same, the, to the upper part. Okay? And if you reflect, you have the same problem. You have the down lorries and the both separatrices of the singularity goes to the cross section that is down. And the question was the following. Can we construct an attractor in such a way that it has singularity like this one with the difference that you have this one separatrice of the singularity goes up and the other one goes down. This is what we call a two-sided Lorentz attractor. Okay? okay? If you try to, to do this, you see that from this picture here, it's not possible. How can I put the one here and the, the cross section? You see this is a global cross section. It has just one, uh, this leaf here is a singular leaf. 
and uh, you have an obstruction to, to do what I'm telling you. To do, you have one cross section, one from one side and the other one to the other side. Then you have to modify a little bit the model. And the way to do this, well, by the way, all this is a joint paper with uh, Diego Barros and uh, Christian Bonatti, okay? It was written in the beginning, but I forgot to emphasize this. Okay, and then I, I, we have just to modify this model here in such a way that we can construct another model, one attractor, such that you have that the separatrice of the singularity goes above and below. Okay, and then what we do, okay, um, that is the problem that I was just telling you to exhibit a singular hyperbolic attractor in dimension trees containing a unique Lorentz-like singularity, what means that it's a singularity like this one, hyperbolic, they have three eigenvalues, real eigenvalues, and they respect the same order as in the Lorentz attractor, okay? And uh, robustly, you see, because this here is the center of stable manifold of the singularity. I'm just putting here the upper part, but you have the down part. And what I want, I want to construct a model such that you have one separatrice going up and the other one going down to the sta central stable manifold, okay? Okay, and so, this is not important, okay? This is the Lorentz attractor that I was the picture is here, and that was the model by Guggenheim Williams that have the, all these properties that I just told you before. Okay, <coughs> that was the property I was telling you, and uh, now I will start modifying the, the construction. The first thing is, okay, I take, instead of take the <clears throat> a rectangle cross-section, I'll take a cylinder cross-section, okay? And <clears throat> that is the a cylinder cross-section. Here is that singularity. I'm flowing this is the, the yellow is the center of stable manifold of the singularity. And I start <coughs> flowing this blue part goes here, exactly like in the Lorentz case. The other part, this here, goes on the other side. And then now I have to manage in such a way to return in a convenient way to the cross-section, okay? Okay, and then what we do? We do the following. You see that here, when I pass through a cylinder cross-section, I am in a R3. Then I have space to go from one side to the other one. In R2, I don't have any space, but in R3, I have this possibility. And so what we do is, okay, I take this cylinder here, you see the, the triangle here, and just put back like this. And the other one, like that. If this picture is not so, you can just think in this one. And what we are doing? I will respect the. I'll look at the cylinder in another way. You have this. And. Uh,
this part, this, the blue part, or the, uh -huh. it's on the contrary. I want to preserve the colors of the slides and then sorry. I will redo the picture. You have. This is the cylinder, okay? And then the image of this part, which is the red part there, return like this. And the other one. The, the only point is that there you have a perspective. And this picture here, I'm just, how you call this, achatando, I don't know, putting in the plane, okay? Okay, and then this is the, the cross section. And uh, the image, the Poincare map of the flow is that one, okay? Okay. And now, what happened? How I construct a down, a, a up Lawrence and a down Lawrence. I have to recuperate this image here, okay? This image here for the Poincaré map is represents a Lorenz like, okay? Is this this is one that it's in the up Lorenz, and the other one is a down Lorenz. The picture for the two side Lorenz is more complicated, and I will not do it, okay? Okay, this is the construction construction and what we would like to, to know about this. How to, uh, to describe the dynamics of this kind of flow, okay? And how you do this? The point is that exactly as you do with the Lorentz attract. You have to study first this map the two-dimensional map associated to this construction and see what is going on with this. You know that this is the, the image. You know that this part here goes here. And the other one here comes here. You see that you have the freedom now just to move. To move how these points are located in the cross section. Okay? Okay. And uh, the first, uh, you know that associated to this construction, you can do it in such a way that the radio foliation is preserved, and you have, again, a one-dimensional map, okay? Then you start, in, you can take a look in the first uh, one-dimensional map associated is of this type. You have two singularities, no? Because, and you have one here, this is in the, the circle, okay? The image here. And the other one is this one. And the, the first thing that you, you have one problem to begin with. Because you know that for the Lorentz map, one dimensional map, you want these conditions. This condition is the one that guarantees that the 
you have a, a transitive attractor in the one-dimensional map. Then you have to, okay, I, I want to see what is the minimal expansion that I, should, I ha must have in such a way that this map that has two singularities is eventually on to or transitive, okay? And just to be like this, it's not enough. It is not enough because you, you have two singularities and you have to guarantee that once you start to iterate the interval, if you remember how you do in the one dimensional, this one, the map one, the, the Lorentz one dimensional map, you take an interval. Then while the iterate is in one side of these sub intervals, the image increases, okay? But finally, you will touch the singularity. And if you touch the singularity, what you do? You just see the image and you take the, uh, the bigger component and iterate again. And then each time you have, you you go, in, while you don't touch the singularity, the interval increases. Once it touches the interval, you have to split the interval in two components, take the bigger one, and continue the, to, do, to iterate the bigger one, okay? And since this derivative is bigger than two, you are safe, you arrive, arrive to the whole interval. But there, this is not enough because you, you, you have the risk to stay in the same side of this map. Then the, the expansion must be bigger than the, the golden number just to guarantee that once you uh, split the interval, the image of one interval, when you continue to iterate, it will cover everything, okay? This is one difference between the expansion about the one-dimensional map associated to the Lorentz, usual Lorentz, and the one-dimensional map associated to this construction, okay? Okay. Now, we start looking the um, two-dimensional map, first return map. Let me just comment that indeed we could do all what uh, I will tell you now with an analyzing the one-dimensional map. But for us, I think that it's easier to understand the picture and uh, the two-dimensional map because you have, um, at least for me, you have the, the, geomet the geometry of this two-dimensional map is quite interesting and then you can just see the two-dimensional Lorentz map inside this, okay? Okay, and then the first thing is that, okay, you, you see that this is the cross-section that I did here. You have the, this is the unstable separatories of the, no, sorry, the, the leaf that goes directly to the singularity, then you have two, one up, another down. And when you have a fixed point, you see, look at this red part. It crosses everything. If this point here is on the other side, then you have a fixed point somewhere. And if the, the other point here, the blue part, no, comes directly like this, this is a Markov map. Just, you, you keep it closing in a cylinder and open the cylinder, okay? What is the, you, when you have a, a fixed point, a hyperbolic map, no? if you have something like that, the image 
is, I don't know, it's like a, a Markov. You have an invariant. If you have a rectangle that crosses here, you have a fixed point inside. It's like a Markov. The, the image of this, the red part goes cross completely the left part of the cross section. The same for the blue part when the singular points are on contrary sides of the cross section. Okay, and then we, I think that I'll just put the, According to the, where the, we split this kind of flows, then we, ha, we will describe an open set of flows, and we, we do like that. We, we split in regions, then we have, or let's call, this is the set of flows such that the expansion is bigger than the golden number, and then you put here this, and what's the meaning? You have here is the cross section. You have, we call this the red part of sigma one and the blue part of sigma two. And this set here is characterized that, okay, vector field is in this part, if the singular point corresponding to the red part, let's do this. This is Q1. And the other one we call the notation is this one, okay? Then Q1, Q1, uh, no, is in this one, no, in all the. And the other ones just Okay, what I'm doing, I'm just splitting the set of all flows according to the position of the singular point of the two-dimensional, the Poincare map in the cross-section, okay? I have the cross-section here, 
this is the left part is the red one, and this one is the blue one, politically correct. The left the part is red. <laughs> okay, and you see that this is the only possibility to have the, the two fixed points. If the Q1 is on the other side, and uh, like that, you have uh, a fixed point on the left, and if Q2 is on the other side, you have another fixed point on the right, okay? And what happened? Here is different. And for flows on this category, we have a two-sided lattice. Well, by the way, what is a two-sided lattice? A two-sided lorries, the definition is the one that you have that the, um, the accumulate, the unstable separatories accumulate on both sides of the cross-section. This is a two-sided lorries, okay? Okay, and then, uh, let's see. <coughs> this is what I wrote there. The first uh, theorem that indeed you have a two sided Lorentz on this part of the quadrant. No? Uh -huh. I will try to verify this. Just one, because all the other ones are similar. Okay, the proof. Okay, and then you have, as I said, a fixed point here on the left side and a fixed point, if you want. Uh -huh. No, no. This case, okay, it's on, it's on the contrary. For instance, this one. Q1, no, it's this one what I'm doing here. You have, which one? Bom, eu fiz o favor de colocar a figura errada. Deixa eu ver. Hã? É. <laughs> Problem. <laughs> Let me just see. You have Q1, Q2. Q1 está em sigma 2 e Q2 em sigma 1. Q1. É. It's on the. I'm looking this case here. What? Q2 is in sigma 2 in that case. Q2 should be in sigma 2 in that case. Yes, indeed. Sigma. Ah, uh, that's true. It's written wrong on the Well, I'll take that. Okay, I, I'll do the right. And then to prove it the, that the a two sided Lorentz attract, okay, what do we have to do? We have to do the following take one unstable segment and prove that the iterates of the unstable segment will 
accumulated in the up uh, leaf and in the down singular leaf. We call this is a, this is a, a singular leaf. And uh, this one, the blue, whatever, is we have to prove that the, any singular um, unstable segment, what, what is an, an unstable segment in this context? An unstable, unstable segment is just a segment. You see that the contracts on this direction and unstable segments are just segments that are any place here, transverse to the radial uh, foliation, okay? Then you, you take this and you have to prove that this accumulates everywhere. How you do? You just uh, okay. You take an unstable segment like this, and if the unstable segment intersects both the unstable leaves, the singular leaves, then you have that it cross all the unstable leaves and we are done. If it's not, uh, I'm a little bit confused because he told me that I have 10 minutes and I think that I will just tell you that you can believe that this is really true. And the way you prove is like this. You take the, uh, a segment, the unstable segment, you start iterate the unstable segment. If the length of the iterates is unbounded, then we are done, okay? Because it will increase and then we will cross all the stable leaves, okay? Then you assume that it's not unbounded and you arrive a contradiction in the way because uh, you use the expansion that uh, you just choose the one bounded connect, uh, component of the uh, iterates and you start iterating again and finally you have the result. I'm sure I'm just confused because of the emotion of talking no following all the things, and, but it's not so uh, difficult to prove this. It's much the same as I told you for the one-dimensional map here for the Lorenz attractor. And, uh, okay, for vector fields, I'm just telling you for points, then we, can, we, are, we are able to prove that here you have a two side the Lorentz attractor in the, in the sense that all unstable segment accumulated in both the stable manifold of the singularity, the upper one and the down one. And here, then what happened in this part? And in this part, you have that, you have the cool one, in one side and the Q2 on the other side and you have two fixed points. And you have to analyze the position of these points on the stable manifold of the fixed points that arise, okay? You see, and uh, here, it's quite, Again, you have to split the set according to the position of these singular points respect to the fixed points, okay? And then you split in another regions and you can prove that in one side 
uh, sorry, let me see that. In one of these regions, you have uh, two recurrent classes, and one is a fake horseshoe, because here is not a, a usual horseshoe, because the orientation is, uh, is different. You have this kind. What? L plus is the. Uh, no, I'll do. Let me just. This is the important. This region, see that you have uh, the. Uh, when Q1 Q is on the le uh, right part and the other singular point is on the left part, you have two fixed points. One in the left, which is P1, and the one in to the right, okay? And now you started, uh, how you say this, moving this point, Q1, and the, the singular points. If this point, you, you, you have the freedom to do this, no? This situation corresponds that you split again the the cross-section into regions that separate the by the stable manifolds of the two fixed points. Then you have the possibilities. Both are above, both are below, and one in above and the other one below. And then you just see in this part here, for instance, look, you have that the, let me put here the, no, I didn't, okay. If you look, this is the part above the, the stable manifold of the two fixed points. And in this case, you separate if the point is above here. Look, you have the, uh, a Markov map. Point, you just look on the position and you are able to recognize in this picture when you have either a Lorentz map like that or a hyperbolic map. And this is according to the position of the singular points of the two-dimensional map with the stable manifold of the two po fixed points that appear. And, uh, okay, this is just, you have uh, another possibility that it's, you have a, a two-sided Lorentz in the, this corresponds to a homoclinic loop because you have this, is the stable manifold that the singular leaves. And here you have that both points, singular points are following exactly in these lines. And then you have homoclinic loops. You can also characterize what is going on. If you have a two Lorentz, a fat Lorentz, everything just looking and you can prove this. And uh, you have also a collision of this, the Lorentz and a fake horseshoe in the sense that you just go moving these points, you can just have a collision of these points, of a horseshoe and the, a fake horseshoe and the, the, the Lorentz attractor. And this is the picture here, but you know that it, it's really just a, a, a matter of understand the picture. And then once you understand the geometry of this according to the position of the singular points and the stable manifolds of the fixed point that arrive, you are, you, uh, your intuition gives you the guide to prove the result. It's just a point like that, that I'm trying to tell you. And uh, okay.
you, you have all the possibilities. And uh, finally, we, are, we were also able to describe a uh, one parameter family, how uh, this happened. And uh, we describe for the one parameter family of flows what happened when it, the transitions from one case to the other one. And uh, finally, we have that uh, for this, uh, assuming that the flow for this one parameter family uh, has a unique SBR measure, you can prove that uh, a collision here, this is the interesting uh, point that you have of this green. You can characterize the the region is split by one dimension, two one-dimensional manifolds, and you can characterize everything. And the point is, uh, when you pass through one family that you have a two, you collapse here with the, the horseshoe, the fake horseshoe and the fat lorries. You, uh, we would like to, to, to know what happened with the, uh, the support of this measure, okay? That changed drastically, okay? And uh, finally, okay, we are able to, to describe all this, but this I will leave it for the next time and just to, to finish, now is the part of uh, Accord do Jacoli, okay, <laughs> a part do choro, <laughs> a part do choro. <laughs> olá, olá, não, Jacó, o que eu aprendi com você? Bom, uh, sorry, but I'll, I'll talk in Portuguese now. And uh, todo mundo falou dos aspectos do Jacó aqui, eu vou falar de um outro que ainda não foi tocado que primeiro eu aprendi duas lições que eu tento levar. Uma é, o diabo não é tão feio quanto possa parecer. Essa foi sempre uma frase que o, o Jacó sempre disse. Qualquer problema, keep calm, que vai dar certo e você vai conseguir resolver. E o outro, esqueça as mágoas, não vão cooperar em nada para você viver bem. Então, as mágoas e as amargas põe de lado. E o um, um outro, que a gente tem um vínculo, a parte do choro, né? que é a Laura. Aí está, no primeiro dia, aqui o Jacó com ela. Depois, ele também é um pai amoroso, tem várias, peguei algumas uh, fotos aí do passado. Aqui, acho que a gente está em, em Edimburgo. Aqui foi em Warwick, quando ele recebeu a honores causas da universidade lá, aqui na praia, com a Laura. Aqui a gente estava no Egito, ele estava aqui com a Laura, estava atravessando um dos lugares lá, aqui nas pirâmides. Uma outra, ela também acompanhou a gente, muitos daqui conhecem a Laura desde pequena, porque ela ia nos eventos com a gente. Aqui tem uma que está, é o Marcelo, Takens, Jacó e a Laura. Aqui os dois estão confabulando, essa, essa foto aqui, vê, eu fiz questão de colocar essa pessoa aqui, a gente estava no Cairo, esperando que, um, tinha uma guia que ia levar a gente no museu, e eles estavam confabulando aqui alguma coisa em frente ao ao museu. Aqui é com o Henrique e o Alberto Pinto, também nessa mesma ocasião aqui em Edimburgo. 
aqui com o Carlson. Aqui é uma foto na, na casa do Jean Christophe. O Jean Christophe era muito amigo da gente. E essa aqui foi uma ocasião que a gente foi jantar lá na casa do Jean Christophe, há muitos, muitos anos atrás. Aqui é o Jean Christophe. Aqui atrás está o pai do Jean Christophe. Aqui a Laura, o Tiago, que é o filho de Jean Christophe e Dalva, e aqui a Dalva. E aqui eu, a gente estava no Chile. E essa ocasião aqui é interessante porque a gente foi... A gente está num restaurante que tem uma história. A gente, o, o Rafael, que está aqui, o Labaca, conversou com o cara do restaurante e a gente comprou dez garrafas de um vinho canepa, canepa finíssimo, que, sei lá, era do ano 70. Um, fantástico. E a gente comprou nessa ocasião aqui. Bom, depois... A Laura casou em 2018. Aqui está a gente com ela. O Jacó aqui e eu entrando. É, aqui também foi um, um fato legal, porque, em geral, a noiva entra na igreja apenas com o pai. Mas a Laura quis que entrasse com o pai e com a mãe. Enfim. Foi legal isso. Depois, casamento feito. Aqui está o Juliano. E aqui a Laura, irradiando felicidades. E agora, o que mais? Eu ganhei também o, a família que está crescendo. Aqui tem... Nós estamos em Búzios com a Rebeca, o marido da Rebeca Flávio, aqui é o Rafael, filho da Rebeca, o Juliano, a Laura, o Carlos Emanuel e a Isabela, e aqui a Maria, que é neta, filha do, do Carlos Emanuel. Aqui a, a Isabela, a, essa família já cresceu, porque tem o Emanuel, que é o filho do Carlos, com a Isabela, que já nasceu no dia 15 de janeiro. E aqui está a Laura esperando o Francisco. Então, a família, de fato, vai crescer. E parabéns ao Jacó por todos esses anos muito bem vividos. Obrigada. Are there any more comments or questions? Pode perguntar em português também. <laughs> If... Scientific question. So, um, so this construction, as, I as you mentioned, it's, it's robust. It's an open set. It's robust. So uh, just to, uh, to my limited understanding in this area, so to understand it in relation to your result of 2004, which is telling, as I understand it, roughly that in three dimensions, typical chaotic attractor, like usual chaotic attractor is Lorentz-like. So this is Lorentz-like as well, right? You know that it's a, it's not a Lorentz-like yeah, template, you know. So it's not topologically it's equivalent. Yes. Yeah. Depends on the region mm -hmm. that you split the flows. When you have this situation here on this quadrant, you, you have, you can have a, a Lorentz-like attract, an up, down, This is Lorentz like. But you have the transition also. You have the transition that you can have. Uh, even the two sided the Lorentz attractor is a Lorentz. Yeah, that, that's yes. actually my, my question. Each one that you have, the up Lorentz in this construction, is robust. 
the down Lawrence is robust and the two side of the Lawrence is robust. But then, but you have to, you separate this type of attractor that appear in this construction. The division is through one dimensional, co-dimension one manifolds. Is when you touch the stable manifold of the fixed points that arise uh, on this construction. And you have the, the singular points on opposite sides from where it comes. You have this division. Thank you. Due to time, we'll finish here. Feel free to talk with Zezé, and let's thank the speaker again.